Welcome to Civil War Digital Digest. I'm Will. Well, thanks to the generosity of our patrons, the CWDD Coffee Grinders were able to take our team and head south, at least for us, to Ohio, a new state for shooting in the Digest. Christina Smith is with me today. And Christina, where are we at and where are you welcoming us to? Well, we're here at the Hayes Presidential Library and Museums. We are in the museum building right now. Uh, we have a lot to offer here. Um, we have President Hayes' 31-room Victorian mansion. We have the museum, and we're on the lower level right now, but we have two levels. Uh, we also have America's first presidential library with a very vast archive. And we are on a 25-acre estate that was owned by the President and First Lady. That's an official arboretum. They are buried here on the property, so you can visit their tomb. It's just a short walk from the house and all of the gates at the entrances were at the White House when President Hayes was there. So everything kind of ties together. Wow, well, when you talk about connecting to history, not only it's our first chance to work with the Presidential Museum, but talk to me about this house. How long were they here? So Rutherford and Lucy uh, lived here in their retirement. We kind of refer to it as their retirement home. Um, a lot of tours ask, oh, was he born here? How did he end up here? Because he was actually born in Delaware, Ohio, which is down by our state capital of Columbus. Um, and then he lived in Cincinnati as a young man. He was an attorney there. Of course, he served in the Civil War, went to Congress. He became governor of Ohio, so he lived in Columbus. And then, of course, he went back to Washington, D.C. to be president. So a lot of visitors say, how in the world did he get to Northwest Ohio? The answer is his Uncle Sardis. Uncle Sardis lived here. He was kind of like President Hayes' surrogate father. Hayes' father died before he was born. So Uncle Sardis was his mother's brother, and he kind of stepped in and filled that role. He built the Hayes home. He gave it to Rutherford and Lucy. It was their summer home for quite a while. And um, then after Hayes served his second term as governor, they moved here. They were planning to retire. He ended up uh, running for a third term as governor, which he did not finish because he became president. So they lived here for a short time before the presidency and then they retired here. And then the Hayes family kept the house and lived here until 1965. And then they gave it to the state of Ohio. Wow, well the house is magnificent to see and what a wonderful place to walk through. But as a Civil War series, you mentioned Hayes before being a president as a Civil War officer, we see a display behind us. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about where this is on the site and then what we're seeing? Yeah, so this is a this is a staff favorite. Um, so we're on the lower level of the museum and we call this the early years section. Um, and here's where we talk about the Civil War service and Rutherford and Lucy's early life. And so this is the Civil War diorama and uh, the jacket that you see on the Hayes mannequin actually was Hayes' jacket. Hayes was wounded uh, five times in four different battles. And he was wearing this jacket when he was wounded at the Battle of South Mountain. It was his most serious injury. He suffered a gunshot to the arm and you can actually see the bullet hole in the jacket and then you can see where the surgeon cut the jacket to perform the surgery to save his arm. Um, and then everything in here that you see is original, uh, did belong to Hayes. So this is kind of a staff favorite. And then on the other side, we have have uh, Lucy as part of the diorama. Civil War was also very important for Lucy. She would take the kids and go visit Rutherford in the winter camps where he was stationed in what is today West Virginia. And she would tend to the soldiers and mend their uniforms and they loved her. They called her Mother Lucy. Wow, that's pretty incredible. And it's such a rare story from the Civil War that somebody could have family members come with, come to be with them for a little while. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Um, they actually lost one of their children in the Civil War camp. Um, he died of an illness and they actually sent him home on the train. Uh, Lucy uh, writes in a letter that it was the saddest day of her life seeing the little coffin leave on the train. Well, as we talk about a connection, there's a talk about loss. There's also a talk about perseverance. What do we see around here with Hayes' service? So Hayes, one of the cool things I think about Hayes is he was 39 when the war broke out. So back then uh, he was considered older and uh, he didn't have to go, but he felt so strongly um, about keeping the union together, about ending slavery that he enlisted and he went. So I think that says a lot about him. You know, he gets a command position uh, with no military experience and luckily for him, he was very good at it. So as you know, from some of his battles, there, there are some scary times where he just forges ahead where that might test one's will. And you see from a lot of his letters with Lucy with the Civil War, it was hard for them to be apart. The war itself was hard, you know, um, um, 
people were in disagreement about a lot of things. And you can see in the letters, he really kind of perseveres for the cause. And so does Lucy. They, you know, they're separated for a long time. They lose two children during the war, um, but they continue sort of with their eyes on, on keeping the union together and, and this just cause. Oh, we get those stories and the story of what's obviously a very strong marriage and a house. We've been to the museum. We've been to the house. What else can I see here? Uh, so one of the things people really like to see is our library. Um, the library itself is kind of like a reading room, but we have uh, four floors of secure storage that have Hayes' books. He had more than 10,000. We have all his letters. So um, some of the letters I'm referencing with him and Lucy writing during the Civil War are there, his presidential papers. And if you go up to the library, we have some cases with some of those things. One of the big things that we do here is genealogy, and that's because Hayes enjoyed genealogy. So one of my favorite things is sometimes the librarians will bring out his genealogy books and back then they would actually cut holes in them to sort of link up the different pages uh, if that makes sense so you'd turn the page and there oh okay this connects to this person great talk to me about that library being a first in the presidential <laughs> library world yeah, so um, President Hayes' children uh, got this place started. They were led by his second son, who was Colonel Webb Cook Hayes. So you're sensing a military theme here in the family. And he wanted to do something to preserve his parents' artifacts and his father's papers. And this was a very new concept at the time. Um, so you can see through um, years of him trying different things. We have uh, letters he wrote, his diaries, things like that. You know, at one time he approached Andrew Carnegie about making this a, a regular library, but different with all these artifacts. And so it really was a new concept and it took him a while to land on what this was. He went through quite a bit and when it opened, uh, one side uh, was the library and one side was the museum and you had this big, beautiful rotunda. And the old pictures show he'd have like his mom's wedding dress uh, and then there would be all the books. Um, so everything was kind of put together. We are the first one, so we predate the federal system. Uh, when the first federal presidential library was getting together the FDR uh, library, they had actually contacted uh, our site for some information. So we like to say we're the forerunner of the federal presidential library system. Fantastic. And you say, you mentioned his mother's wedding dress. This is Webb, so this is Lucy's yes, wedding dress. Yes, so this dress would be Lucy's would have wedding dress. Yes. We have the ability to see it here in the museum today. Yes, yeah, it's on this lower level with the early years. So it's kind of interesting because those older photos will show, uh, you know, like a dress or some sort of artifact, and then there are all these books as well. So it was interesting how he put all that together. Fantastic. Well, I see you smile and your mm -hmm. eyes light up as you talk about this place, Christine, and you've obviously been all over it what's the spot here for you? It's hard to pin down one spot. I would say, I guess, I like to tell people my favorite room in the house is the inner sanctum just because it's so cool and that was like his escape. But honestly, I think my favorite spot is probably their bedroom. And the reason for that is their bedroom wasn't just a bedroom. They used it uh, sort of like a, a family room. They did their Christmas in there with the kids. Lucy did her sewing. That's where she had her stroke. That's where they both died. So I feel like that room, it just encompasses so much of the family. It's, it, there's so much there when you walk in there. Um, you think about Rutherford and Lucy and their rock solid relationship, all the years they spent there and then they both passed away there. Uh, you think about the times they had uh, with their children in there. It just seems like it's a place where there were lots of happy times, probably lots of serious discussions. And so even the later generations, um, the, the youngest, uh, the last children to live in the house are now probably in their late 60s, early 70s. And when they've come back, you know, I've, I've asked them, so did you guys like stay in Rutherford and Lucy's room? And they always say, no, no, that was sacred space. And they never went in there and they left the door shut. So it just, it it's, uh, was always a special place for the family after that as well. Uh, so I don't know if that makes sense. But. It does, <laughs> okay. it does. And it's, am it's amazing. We look at a Civil War major to brevet brigadier general, a leader of men. We look at a local politician. We look at a president of the United States. Mm -hmm. And all of that sets its bedrock on a marriage. Yes, yeah, they had a, an extremely strong marriage. I think that Lucy is really interesting too um, for her for her time period. So it's it's they really were a team, I think. And so for me, some of it too, when I mentioned the bedroom probably being my favorite, it's also, you know, so you know he was governor, you know he was president, he did all these things in the Civil War, um, but it's them as people, which I find very interesting as well, getting to know them 
I mean, obviously we don't know them, but getting to know them on a personal level, I guess, from their experiences and seeing where they lived and reading their letters and his diaries and things like that. Fantastic. Well, thank you for hosting us and thank you for giving us a little look behind. Folks, this museum is wonderful to look at original artifacts. I can't speak highly enough having spent a couple hours earlier today about the house. Come here to Fremont, Ohio, find a connection to history, find a connection to one of our American presidents. We'll see you down the road.